it's your boy GS Luke here for another prize picks preview, this time for round one at the Pebble Beach Pro-Am. We're going back to Pebble Beach. We have a prop board finally up for this event. So we're going to go through our top four for the first round slate. We only have props for Pebble Beach, which is a little bit of a bummer. Even at the Amex, we were dealing with multiple golf courses. But for this week, it looks like they've decided to just offer props at Pebble, which will definitely simplify our process. We don't have to be looking into all three golf courses can really narrow down from the historical data that we have from Pebble Beach, which is a little bit of a plus there, but I kind of liked some of the soft markets that we got with those other golf courses that they kind of had a hard time accounting for. It seems like they kind of have gone over that fact. They don't like being um, taken advantage of on those other golf courses, so can't really blame them to going for this format. So like I said before, these will be my top four props for round one and what is going to be my main card for that. All right, and on the screen, you guys can see the prop board for today. And you can see that we're going to start with two greens in regulation props. And at the Pebble Beach Golf Links, we have greens that are extremely small, just 3,500 square foot on average, some of the hardest greens to hit on tour. As a result, you're looking at right around a 55% green in regulation percentage, which means that even the best players on tour are looking at hitting 10, maybe 11 greens. If they're having a solid day, really on with their ball striking, 13 to 14 is reasonable. But you can see a lot of the guys on the board here are at pretty high numbers, right? 11 and a half for Nick Watney. Guys like a Joel Damon down at 11, it makes a little bit more sense because he's such a good iron player. But somebody like Nick, Walkie, Nick Watney that is well past his prime, more of a casual type of golfer would know about him because he used to be really solid, right? He was a top 10 golfer in the world at one point, but is a shell of his former self. So you can see we're looking at taking the under on Nick Watney there. It's not like he isn't a good iron player. We've seen him play very good with his wedges, but 11 and a half greens regulation is high for pretty much anybody in this field, particularly somebody that's old, a little bit washed up, and that I'm actively looking to fade. Next up, we have Joel Damon, who I said I am looking at taking the over on. He's one of the best iron players on the board here, gaining four tenths of a stroke per round with his iron play over his last 24 measured rounds, making him one of the best in the entire field. And the closer you get him to the hole, that 50 to 125 yard range, that 125 to 150 range are his specialties, those scoring wedges. And that's what we get a ton of here at Pebble Beach. So even though it's at 11, again, I would pretty much take the under on most of the other lines here. If anybody's going to hit the over, it will be a Joel Damon. It is why I'm taking my investment there. Next up, let's go on to Fairway's hit. And we're going to go ahead and start off with Jimmy Walker. You can see with, first of all, with Fairway's here, a lot of the numbers much lower. And to me, they have got this backwards. The Fairway's at Pebble Beach, not all that hard to hit. You're looking at a 66% fairway hit rate in terms of Pebble Beach, at least under these conditions. When you play the US Open here, it gets closer to 56, 57% because they narrow the fairways. But for this Pro-Am, where we're going to have plenty of amateurs spraying the ball out there, they don't tighten the fairways. So you're looking at a relatively easy set of fairways to hit. That's why Jimmy Walker at just seven and a half fairways is perhaps my favorite prop on the entire board. That's just disrespectful. He has to go out there, hit just over 50% to hit the over, and he's one of the better drivers in this field, let alone of just the 12, 15 props that we have up here. So really like the over on him at seven and a half. I have him projected closer to hitting nine and a half, 10 fairways at the very least. And now finally, we're moving over to birdies or better for our last pick, which is going to be Matthew Fitzpatrick, over four birdies or better. In terms of his world ranking, he's the fourth best player in this field. He's somebody who's coming in the 25th ranked player in the official world golf rankings. He's a very solid course fit, somebody who in other DFS formats, I've invested plenty of my lineups behind. So somebody who's a good putter, great with the wedge play. The off the tee play is one of the more accurate drivers in the world. This makes it a no brainer, right? He's tied with people like a Nick Watney, a Nick Taylor, um, Schwartzel, days at four and a half, even higher than somebody like Fitzpatrick, even though he's much higher on the official world golf ranking. So for me, it's a no brainer, especially when we compare it to other guys like a Scott Piercy or even a Russell Knox, who might be a good course fit, but in terms of their pedigree long term, in terms of their world rankings, it's not even close. So really like the over there. You could take a look at a few other of his props. Um, I wouldn't mind going to the Fitzpatrick Greens of Regulation. We saw that one on here a little bit earlier. It was at 11 and a half, right? So same thing as Nick Watney. Um, a little bit higher than what we have for Joel Damon, but I would still be willing to take the over. 
He's a very solid player, again, top 25 player in the world. So we can expect him to hit over 60% of greens. But the fairway number, probably even better. You can see for a Matt Fitzpatrick, they have him at 8.5, which is slightly higher than Jimmy Walker. That's why I prefer going Jimmy Walker's way, but also a prolific driver of the golf ball. Could very easily go out there, hit 70, 75% of his fairways tomorrow. So those are the props that I'm looking at, most likely in a flex format. Again, the board's pretty ugly. Right? We have to take guys like Nick Watney, Jimmy Walker, who I don't think we expected to be taking on prize picks, but that's the board that we were dealt this week. And unfortunately, those are the highest EV props that we've got. That's all I've got for this prize picks preview. Before you go on and get out of here, go ahead and let me know what your favorite prop on the board is. It doesn't have to be something I mentioned in the video. It could be completely something off my radar, but go ahead and let me know what that is down below. Also, if you haven't already liked the video and you enjoyed this type of content, make sure you go ahead and do so. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I highly recommend you go ahead and do that as well. We're going to have even more prize picks content coming throughout the weekend for rounds two through four. We also have our regular DFS content that I'm always posting here on the channel as well, whether it's for DraftKings, course breakdowns of every golf venue, NBA content, NFL content, MMA stuff for all of the UFC cards. I've got you guys completely covered. Good luck with all of your prop hunting for round one. I look forward to seeing you guys for round two, and let's get this cash.